Hello and welcome to another Gags Tandon show and another bloody win. So I'm joined by Jack again. Jack, that's two out of two for you. <laughs> not, not too bad, mate. We are absolutely, we were saying just in the green room before we go on air, mate, we're absolutely flying and, and Reds, let us know your thoughts on that as we'll obviously debrief on the show, mate, but what a, what a performance. And again, these lads are making us even more proud of week on week. And let's let's hope it continues as well, mate. That's it. Harinda Baji is straight in there. Up the massive reds. We are massive right now. It feels massive. I think I think there's so much to talk about in that game. Let's just do a really quick overview of the numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to make this really short and sharp, not like last time where I was messing around and uh, getting things messed up. <laughs> but right now, I mean, just look at the first half. We were dominating here as well. Six shots. Um, three on target, 0.63 expected goals. I don't want to go through the shots individually. I'm just going to go through the performance itself. And then if you look at the second half, this was this was real big time. 1.9 XG to 1.12. All over on that second half. We'll go, we'll get on it in a minute. Overall, 2.5 XG to the 1.24. Obviously, they had the penalty as well, which pushes theirs up and pushes yeah. ours up as well. But still, a great, great start. I mean a <laughs> A great week, a great start to Anfield Index on YouTube. I know we've been going for a while in terms of the shows, but to go live, this is our first week of real live shows and two big wins to take us right to the top of the Premier League and then back to the top of the Champions League, Jack. A quick yeah. quick thoughts uh, on how you're feeling really after this uh, this monumental first two games for you. I'm just so happy, mate. I'm being here to hear like every Liverpool fan up and down the world, really. It's 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 it there's one thing beating teams in Europe, but to beat this this Real Madrid side. Um I know obviously coming into the game there had a lot of injuries, but even still, there was still a task in hand and as we'll go through the goals and obviously the saves as well. But I think to quickly to rush ahead in terms of my man in the match, I think to Conor Bradley, mate, I think he was absolutely exceptional. Um, I don't know, uh, you'll get to your man in a sec, mate, but for me, it, that's probably one of the most complete right back performances I've seen in many of a year. I said, on we watch on the watch long on Anfield Index, he was didn't put a foot wrong, miss. I completely agree that he was he was fantastic. I have a different man in the match, and we we seem to have this every weekend so far. Yeah, it's um, good. But Bradley, Bradley with the um, the tackle in that first half just got the crowd really going again, and then the the assist for the first goal as well. Just having that presence of mind to to see the run, see the one two, you know, and go. And I think um, Andrew McIver has got a really good point in terms of. And well, he he feels that we shouldn't have gone strong, but it's Real Madrid at home. You're gonna you're gonna go strong, Andrew. Unfortunately, um, and uh, yeah, we we well we've qualified now. I think more than anything, but to be top of it as well is a is a good feeling for the whole club and the fans. And I get it. You're gonna get um, if Canate and uh, Bradley are out for a long time, we're in trouble. But you can't blame the the manager for playing them, and you can't blame the players for wanting to play as well. To be honest, uh, in a game like that, and also with with Trent just coming back. You know, uh, Jack, it was, it was, you know, it, he had to play today. Maybe he could have got subbed early, I'd say. Yeah, it was, it was one of them. Made apologies if any of you was on YouTube and just hit me cameras overheated. Obviously, it's been going for about five hours. <laughs> um, but obviously, you can still hear me. That's the main thing. Um, but yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's disappointing to see those injuries, mate. I think uh, I understand the, the comments in terms of some fans might have wanted to be a bit, a bit more flexible in terms of, well, injuries are part and parcel, mate. I think we, we will get injuries. We have had injuries tonight. Um, they're not good, but I think in terms of the deputants to come in, in terms of the City game and a couple of weeks of Ebu and, and Connor are out for out, we, we've got quality. That's the main thing, I think, in terms of the rotation from this squad. The players that are coming in, uh, uh, they're going to do really well, in all honesty, mate. As you can see, there's some people um, a little bit um, concerned with the Canadi challenge. I think we yeah. all are. And um, also uh, a real funny one from Jag, Jag here. Real Madrid will be looking to buy our right back now, but which one? <laughs> yeah, that was good, that miss. Now, which, which one? Which one? Even the goalies I, as well, mate. Everyone will be looking at Keller. Yeah, they're after the keepers as well. They're after Ali. I mean, let, let's talk about Keller as well. Um, what an incredible game. He didn't have much to do at times, but when he was called upon, yeah, world class again. You were saying it on, on your uh, live stream world class like literally he is a world class goalkeeper we are going to get uh big bucks for him if we if we have to sell him you know and and maybe there's a world where you know ali is the one that goes 
you know, and Kelleher and Mamaste. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, you can't predict it, can you, at the end of the day? But right now, um, you just got to be thankful that we got we got Big Kev, as we call him on Anfield Index at times. Yeah, he's um, in terms of well, obviously the penalty save was was a come at a crucial moment in in the game. Obviously, Liverpool would have made it one one, but I think in terms of the not just the save in itself, but I think it not that the crowd obviously it galvanised even more. It made it a more fierce atmosphere. I think even the Conor Bradley challenge in the first half as well that was as good as a goal really. But it it's it's exceptional. I think he's probably better. I don't know how you feel, Maze, or anyone listening or watching is I think his penalty saves, as we know, his antics over the last couple of seasons. It's he's crucial in terms of penalty shoots outs against the likes of Chelsea as well. So we know what he's capable of between the sticks. But I think in terms of applying it in a big, probably one of our biggest games, and it will be one of our biggest games of the season, it's um it just goes to show the the quality in terms of Liverpool do have in terms of Kelleher. Whatever does happen, we're just so blessed and if he does, if he is to say, obviously Mavrash really coming in, in the summer as well, as you alluded to with Ali. Um, there's a lot of options, but I think we're just made up that we've got quality in every area of the pitch, mate. And long may I continue. Yeah, absolutely. Kelleher, like you said, top, top quality, unbelievable. So glad to have him as a as a reserve keeper. And at the moment, you 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 got a question whether Ali walks straight back in or not. I know I know Slot said I was about to say Klopp then. Um I know Slot said um, a couple of weeks back when Ali's fit, he's straight back in. But you've got to you've got to um I mean this the job that Keller has done. Robbo's given away two penalties last three games. He saved them both. Unfortunately, one was one was saved. Yeah, we haven't one was that. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't aware the full time What are you doing? I've I've, I've bailed you out a couple of times to carry on with the uh, the previous point. From Andrew, he he has made a counterpoint. Uh, we played a strong team in the FA Cup Arsenal, and we lost Trent and Canate. I think I think uh, I understand with the Canate point, but Trent uh, was you know only just coming back today, so maybe Gomez. I don't know. We don't even know if Gomez wants to play right back right now. Um, he's come on as a sub there. He, he he'd rather play centre back. So do you play the player who doesn't want to play in a certain position, or do you you play Bradley, who's who the youngsters coming through, and you know you can't. I mean. I think it's looking the, at fatigue index. I mean, if you if you're on Anfield Index Pro and you listen to Sai and folks like that, he's you know I don't think he would have been in the fatigue index red red zone as we call it. So yeah, if you want to subscribe to Anfield Index Pro, go to anfieldindex.com forward slash join. Check out the great uh, content under pressure, etc., and post match raw. But this is YouTube, and I'm here with Jack. So um, my man of the match was Maka. Um, he scored the first goal not because of the first goal though but because he had an absolutely incredible um, game. His passing, his his touches, his, his possession wins. I think, you know, we've been missing him this season. Um, you know, he's not been as good as he was last year. If, if this is where he's going to come into his gear now and he's into his own, then we're in for another, we're in for a treat over the Christmas period, hopefully, or this period in December, where if Maka comes to the game, Jesus Christ, watch out everybody else because he's he's a, he's some player. Great finish. Great finish for the goal as well. So, yes. yeah. He's, he's, especially play, coming up against the players he come up against tonight, mate. I know uh, we all know Madrid had their injuries, but he's coming up against one of the best midfielders of the last 20 years. And Luka Modric will go down in history as one of the best to play football in regards. Kamavinga obviously went off injured, but I think the athletic ability of Kamavinga and Drew Bellingham as well. Um to come up against those three and play the way they did, mate. I think you're spot on in regards to just how the, 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 the Argentinian maestro for us and even Argentina, the ball at his feet, even out of possession tonight, I think, uh, even when Real Madrid did break the lines, did get in behind Liverpool. wasn't many times, but in terms of just um, boxing off those areas of the pitch, that was so crucial. And there was a, there was a chance at the last 20 minutes where he just got an outstretched foot. Any part of his body had done the job. It diverted it away from... Calais goal, and that's the main thing, mate. But he's just um he's pairing at the minute in terms of McAllister, and I think he's I think it's a crucial point in the season in terms of going into the big fixtures ahead. Yeah, um, I mean, I totally agree. He's I love him, and he's I'm so glad that. I mean, you watch Bellingham today, and you, you kind of you can't judge off one performance because he did great last year for Madrid, and they won everything yeah. with him. But when you watch that today, you are like. Oh, I'm, I'm actually quite glad we got the three players in Grav, uh, Dom and, yeah. uh, and Maka in the end, you know. Talking of midfield, 
uh, Midnight Token makes a good point, and we talked about Bradley, but Curtis, on the other hand. Now, I was very, very, um, you know, I was very, very um, frustrated with him in the first half at parts. Mm. I know he still played well, but he wasn't giving the, you know, he was holding the ball long again. And that's one of the things that people do say about kids holding the ball yeah. too long. And there was times where he could have made a, a pass in between lanes and he came back. But when he came out in the second yeah. half, Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. He was superb in that second half. That guy just I don't know what they injected him with. And I'm not <laughs> saying he's injected anything yeah. bad, but maybe the Lucas aid was dropped in there and off he went like the energizer bunny. He was everywhere that first 15 minutes. And I think that kind of pressure and that kind of play from him. Kind of got us to where where we where we were just knocking on that door to score. You know, the pressure was just the crowd and the pressure, and, and also you know when a scouser does it in that in that stadium, if it's a scouser <laughs> pushing the envelope, yeah. people are going to go nuts, and they did. And it's mm. just so wonderful to see him play like that when he plays like that because I I want I want the best for him. You know, I just want yeah. him to be, and if he can get that one thing right about holding the ball, knowing when to pass mm. fast, knowing when to hold it, because to be fair, in the second half, he held it at a period where he should have. He held it. He took pass players. He went through. He, you know, but if he gets it right, he's going to be one of the best. You know, he's going to yeah. honestly be one of the best in the squad. So, and he's playing with the likes of Maka and things like that in midfield. It's if, yeah, if he can just do that bit right. He's he's got all the tools to be a great at Liverpool, Curtis Jones, and that, and you know, I don't know what you feel about that. Yeah, I love him, mate. I don't obviously I've been a staunch defender of Curtis Jones for the many of a year, mate, um, on my channel. Um, like there's always been a player in there, and I get where, as you mentioned, mate, there's a sections of the fan base coming into this season. We all knew about Curtis Jones keeping on the ball, but I tell you what, mate, he's got iron shots, not just for Curtis Jones, but for a lot of these players. Um for every great manager, it's about getting the maximum out of what you currently got and if you can do a bit of business in the summer. But as he said, I mean, that, that those driving runs in terms of, as Chatter already alluded to, the tight areas of possession, keeping hold of it when he's needed. Because if you lose possession against this Real Madrid side, we've mentioned the midfielders, we all know the quality. They can very much spring a quick counter attack, and especially with Killian Mbappe at the top end of the pitch. He, he's always going to provide the threat, mate. But Curtis Jones, it, there's, I'm liking the rotation between him and Sabozla live and being honest, mate. Because. Yeah, it's what you want in terms of having going to opposition teams as well. Opposition managers and, and teams are trying to second guess what Arnie Schlott's going to do and, and exactly the, 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 the opportunities that and the quality that Case does possess. It's long may it continue, mate. Place for here as well. Great coverage, mm -hmm. um, as mentioned by several watchers by Jack tonight. Well, welcome, Damo. Um, nice. I hope it's the same Damo, I think it is from Twitter. Thank you. You said, uh, you said you were you would join us and you have we appreciate it over a thousand people watching now on twitter as well combined with youtube thank you very much for watching in um and i call it twitter i don't call it x because you know yeah elon can do one um why isn't there a chant about kelleher um um i i can't say your first name but mr hennigan or miss hennigan i'm sorry um but yeah, why isn't there a chant about oh, yeah. Keller? I, maybe we can start one, or maybe you can start one in the chat and we can get it going. Um, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, certainly not me singer, mate. I haven't got the greatest tone. I'll like sing. It. I'll oh, sing yeah. online. When we yeah, when we win the league, when oh, we yeah. win the league, I'll say. Yeah, <laughs> <Let's be confident. laughs> no, well, I mean, at the end of the day, hmm. there were other people. The the the, the, the missed penalty, obviously, from Maru, we talked hmm. about how Keller was fantastic. The missed penalty hmm. from Mo, we haven't discussed. Um, I, I think he hit the ground. Uh, when he took it, but it was just a weird. I just think he was, I don't know, Courtois. By the way, oh. we have to say, I hate him, but he's yeah, also <laughs> I absolutely hate him. So um, yeah, he 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 saved so many. It could have been worse. The fact that we won two nil and we could afford a penalty miss from Mo is again just like it's unfathomable at times because we haven't beat these lot for what fifteen years. Mm. Um, and I, I was at both finals, you know, where we lost to these boys. And it, it I mean, the first one was was painful. The second one, the one. was were, were, it. It wasn't painful because I had, I had. What's the word? I've said this on podcasts a lot, and if you've listened to it and heard it before, I'm sorry for repeating myself. But I, I checked out of the game 
in the first half because because of the stuff that happened at the start of mm-hmm. the game where Liverpool fans were blamed for a lot of things and also had friends and family in that side where there was the crush going on and you know there it was it was scary you know it was scary so um and you know it was just from my perspective I was just very happy that they were safe and sound into the stadium when they got in and everything else was meaningless to me after that because you know what I mean we we got a history in our club with with things that have happened and it's not been nice and then fans being blamed again so yeah that second final was a whole different kettle of fish and I didn't enjoy it mm-hmm. But I was there for Madrid, so I enjoyed that one as well. So let's hope we get the Madrid version this time. Well, yeah. We're finally beating them, and that monkey's off our, our fans back. And we beat that bloody goalkeeper finally. Yeah, but yeah, he's, he's one of the best though. When we put we stuck two past him, could have put five past them tonight if we had our if we had our luck. But it's amazing, miss. <laughs> Absolutely, other other good performers then on the night. I think Kanate, mm. Ibu, and mm. and. Um, and VVD was rock solid. V- VVD had one bad pass in the first half, lost the ball, and we, we got mm-hmm. counted on, but nothing came of it. I think we tied it up really well. Um, and Mbappe was dealt with really well by uh, Bradley. There's a few times he went round him, but nothing came of it. I mean, Mbappe yeah. is just... I mean, he didn't. He, did, he got around him a couple of times, but he didn't do much in the game. That, that right-hand side was absolutely locked down, mate, wasn't it? Like, I think, yeah. obviously, there, there was a chance in the first half, I think we can all remember, is obviously with the 1v1 with Ibu and and, and Canate. Canate and obviously Mbappe. Obviously, Ibu knows he knows him very well. Obviously, with the with the France national side as well. But I think that right hand side it needed to be locked down when you play against the caliber of player like Kylian Mbappe. I think we all remember the World Cup final against Argentina. Um, he, he just turned up in about fifteen minutes and scored about two three goals. Um, he's exceptional. He, he sometimes he drifts out of games, but he can just explode within a matter of five minutes in a game and 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 win his team a, a game but it'll be interesting in terms of their reaction as well because we know obviously Real Madrid haven't they've been beaten a couple of times but a lot of the market had absolutely done a batter them and Mbappe's gonna get it's it's mad because the Galactico era the modern day Galactico era throwing Bellingham throwing Mbappe Rodrigo's out but when you throw all those players in sometimes as we know as previously with certain Real Madrid teams, sometimes it just doesn't quite work when you're just throwing all the superstars on the pitch at one time. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. So much so much um, star power. Valverde didn't do anything either, thank God, because <laughs> Camavinga, though, what a player. Mm. What a player. And, um, you know, I was so glad he went off, to be honest. Mm. I was so glad he went off. He was, he was blocking everything. Um, did you, What do you think of Diaz today? It was it was interesting the tactical switch, obviously mm. with the goal that Gakpo scored. But in terms of when it was, it was yeah, the Nunes substitution on the 16th minute, obviously Gakpo come on down that left hand channel. You replace Nunes, and, and I think we seen in the second half, and I think that's where kind of obviously we were dominating for a good 15 minutes prior to that. But I think in terms of Liverpool wrestling control to the full extent, in terms of just getting getting everything control about it. we we seen off that the last 20 30 minutes and i think in terms of diaz preoccupying rudiger it was a completely different option for him i think diaz we've seen that already in the premier league where i think he's surprised as he can we've seen him before arnie schlock come in but i think there's a full technical understanding from, from under understanding from lucho diaz in terms of just everything he wants really from him mate and it's yeah he's I'm just, we're just so blessed in terms of having Diaz, Gakpo, Nunes coming coming off as well. We we are we've got so many great attackers, and even if some of them are misfiring the season, we've got the lads to come off the bench and very much bring the quality as well. I I agree. I think if you talk about uh, the subs, then I mean Lucho, I thought was a little bit below par today. Um, they kind of notified him, but second half came to life again as well. Uh, when the change happened with Darwin, we have we need to talk about Darwin as well. Who first five minutes I thought was going to have a horrendous game after he got booked straight away, and yeah. uh, I want him to stop falling over, you know, holding his face when it's nothing to do. Like yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't major. If it's because the, the referees are going to stop giving you anything if they think you're you're just feigning that, right? Mm. So we need to stop him doing that. I really want um, him to to improve on that. But after that, he was fire, like he was mm. everywhere. There, the pressurizing. There was a run in that first half that he took everyone, you know, through and played it over to Mo. Like it was just, 
Uh, his shot as well was really good. That almost resulted in the own goal, right? The first yeah. shot of the game. So, yeah. you know, he was, he was, you know, he he had a good game, I thought. But when Gakpo came on, a little bit different. Um, and he he led to the goal. I mean, Robbo, for all his faults with um, giving the penalty away, creates the the second yeah, goal with a yeah. with a short corner. Nice, um, nice little thing. But he, how much space did he have for the goal for the header there? It's, it's quite poor though, mate. Isn't it? when you, you'd expect a team like Real Madrid, but I think it was quite good thinking. I think we've seen now already tonight and even so far this season, like Liverpool's ability off a set piece, even dead ball set pieces as well. Um, it, it's that's what that's the small margins. Remember that Trent little set quick thinking, like it's that having that in game intelligence, which is going to be very important for Liverpool come what the end of May, even again tonight, just have that ability. But certainly when you get in those positions, you certainly need that quality. I do miss the consistent Robbo assists from the FPL. Um, if I'm being honest, over like five years before, like you'd be just getting absolutely everything, mate. But yeah, these um, the flying Scotsman, as I call them, we all call them really. But uh, as he said, mate, he made up for the year. Uh, the, the penalty given away is last couple of weeks. <laughs> it's all good. Absolutely. Demo again, Cody has a happy knack of being in the right place at the right time. Totally agree. And also, both fullbacks uh, uh, assisted today. Back into the happy place of fullbacks assisting goals, which is uh, yeah, which is we where are. we want to be. Which is where we want to be at the end of the day. Um, who else was there? Grav? What did you think of Grav? I, I, I did think, if I can mind first this time, I thought he played well. Uh, very A bit, a little bit quiet at times, but he held the ball well when he, when he had to. Yeah. There were times where they played through his easy first half, I think, a few times. But um, I think we were on the front foot a lot, to be fair to us. And, um, you know, they were kind of breaking at those times. So it was going to be... And that type of game suits us sometimes, especially at Anfield, uh, yeah. end-to-end type thing. But um, overall, I thought he played well again. Not as good as um, Mac today uh, or Curtis today, but, yeah. but but solid enough. And again, very happy with how he's turning out. Yeah, I think in terms of his passing accuracy, he's got registered 60 out of 65, obviously 92% of his passing accuracy as well. So that backs up what you've just said there, mate, perfectly in terms of his possession. Uh, and, and that's what you need to, when you play, you are playing against a team like Real Madrid going into the City game as well. Um, if you lose that ball in transition, teams of that magnitude will absolutely punish you at the other end of the pitch anyway. But yeah, he's... Um, Especially from coming into the season, mate. Obviously, I think a lot of Liverpool fans, me included, were like, "Oh, we do need to bring in a number six potentially, possibly in January." If we if we are like say 15, 10 points clear, strength and when we're on top, I think we can all agree in that regard. But if not, then if it isn't the case, and we go all the go all the way till the end of May, Gravenberg if he stays fit, I think in terms of midfield players this so far this season, no, we're early stages, November, but. If he continues this run, I don't think anyone will get close to him uh, over the, outside of, of Liverpool in the Premier League, mate, or even in Europe. He's just got everything about his game is perfect, mate, isn't he? He's big, he's athletic, and he's just he's got everything special. He just needs to he just needed to realise it, didn't he? And that was it. Yeah. The confidence wasn't there and he's had a real he had a rough time the a couple of years back and yeah. you know, he just needed to go back to what he was before. And I think he's he's there. To be honest, I still think he can improve. And like that's nuts, right? Like he's really well. But I think there's levels for him to go up, and because uh, he, he could score goals and things like that too. Yeah, and he's not he's not started to add that into his game just yet for Liverpool. But he's playing a different role. But if we were to sign another midfielder, and then it frees him up to play a different role, sometimes I think we'll we'll get even more out of him um, because he's obviously taking that spot. But if we get Zuby saying. In uh, okay. what a, we're already in what a place, mate, at the minute. Could you imagine we do strengthen on on already the fundamental qualities as well, mate? We will mm -hmm. be not just this season, but we will be flying into next and the and the year after as well. Yeah, it, I mean, I mean, we have to talk about um the manager. I think we've covered everyone in the team now, and we we have to talk about the manager and the start. This is unprecedented and it's not I, I, that's not like taking the piss or, or being biased towards Liverpool or anything even though I fucking will be biased towards Liverpool but it is I mean you'll have other fans saying it it is unprecedented in terms of how he started five out of five in the Champions League for a, a new manager um you know what's what's the record in the league it's 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 what 10 out of 12 or something what is it yeah, no is it 11 out of 12, 12 I think, yeah 11. 11. No, no, we've lost oh, one and drawn one. Yeah, yeah. So, Turn out, but yeah. still, yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> that, again, I think that's not been done before either, or at least mm. 
this is this is a, a fabulous run and long may it continue i don't want it to stop i really don't i think both the there was a lot of fear coming into the season there was a lot of fear of what's going to happen to us how are we going to cope and um you know after life after Jürgen was was for a lot of people there's there's right. there's uber positive people out there but there's a whole load of you know people that were worried and i mm. certainly was one um but i'd heard a lot about slot being good once he once he joined that is i had no idea who he was before i just remember him being linked to spurs a year back before he went to um before before sorry they went for Ange. they went for him first and he rejected mm. it thank fuck for that yeah, you know, joined, um, a, joined a proper club, didn't he? Um, so, <laughs> yeah, there we go. A team that actually wins trophies and will win trophies this season. Isn't it? <laughs> and I think even Tottenham fans would agree with that as well, especially Arsenal yeah. fans. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah. fair play to Tottenham for beating City 4-0. That was, uh, that was yeah, nice, nice to watch, to be fair. Yeah. Now, let's hope we can repeat that as well this weekend. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, your thoughts on on, on, on honour as well. I mean, is uh, the songs being sang, the fact that the song was set up by the previous manager yeah um that's that's low ego from um from jürgen to do that and i'll always love jürgen no matter what but this is this is i mean what are your thoughts on on a slot it's, right now and the way he started it's the liverpool way mate said it it's the honest and liverpool way uh we all back our own even previous gone managers gone by i think even liverpool supporters that grew up in an era of of shankly it was a bit similar in terms of no one expected what would happen but so yeah bob paisley what a job he'd done and what he continued to do for this football club but similar in terms of the passing of the guard it was unprecedented times considering the levels in which this liverpool side had reached um in the egg club era and um, but it's a new dawn it's a new era under arnie schlott and 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 these rival fans that go oh you haven't played anyone like bang on play brighton who beat city and arsenal like you've, you've had big results against the other top sides as well so it's um I'm, I'm excited mate and i think of course there will be a, a couple of forest results along the way and it's all it it's expected and uh, we're not gonna jump go mad but um i think when those results do happen as we spoke about last week mate is we would that's where you just learn so much more and this is where the team will develop even greater into to, to unprecedented times ahead mate but yeah he's been here four or five months on his lot and can you think about the next two years? Could you imagine? Hopefully, oh well and good. I mean, he's he's gonna get a tough period at some point, and yeah. uh, if he doesn't this year, actually, I pray that he doesn't get a tough period this year. So we yeah. win everything. Whatever. But um, Damo again, slot so good. The final fans are singing his name versus Man City, and uh, that's hilarious as well. What happened to them last night with the final? So fair play to the final fans for their their sense of humor and uh, doing that and um yeah it just shows how much how revered slot was at his previous club as well which uh mm. lines it up you know well for, i think you know what i love about him and again i've said this probably haven't said this on a podcast because i haven't been on one for about a year um but what i what i love about slot and i haven't listened to post match but there might be um um some comments here actually they, they will, we'll go to that in a sec but how different he is to Klopp personality wise like it's a complete opposite whereas Klopp fed off the crowd and needed the fans and you know riled them up uh this guy is very much focus and not too bothered uh wants the fans to be there and wants them to make a noise make noise obviously but isn't that like it's just a, it's just Mr Ice Cool and he was all emotion he was fire and this guy's ice if that makes sense yeah. uh that they're, they're complete opposites but it's working and it yeah. shows that the players will still vibe with the manager. It doesn't have to be, you know, um, it doesn't have to be all all fire all the time. It can be a, a nice, cool geezer. And, yeah. and thanks, Bernie, for joining us as well. A uh, long-time AI subscriber and uh, supporter. We appreciate you, Bernie. Um, and, you know, th like I said, it's, it's just a completely different person, personality. Yeah. And his tactics are completely different as well, even though... The yeah. game sometimes does feel like a Jurgen game. It like, today felt yeah. like, but I suppose that's where we have to talk about the crowd, and that's yeah. where we have to talk about Anfield because today was electric, and yeah. we have to tip the hat to the fans once again for being incredible. Yeah, love them, mate. Every every single stands, everyone, not even in the ground, mate, but around the world, everyone you watching at home, mate, and just everyone watching around the globe. 
I'm pretty sure there was, there was countless songs being sung about this great Liverpool side and and will be this season, mate. But yeah, it, it there's there's one thing, and I remember a great interview at Wenger and Mourinho off the back of when we beat Tottenham. It was like, yeah, like yeah, well, it was in the semi-finals, and Wenger was like, yeah. Liverpool have Anfield and we do have Anfield going into the next couple of weeks, next couple of months as well. Um, it's a special ground, special set of supporters around the world as well. Everyone listening and watching. It's, um, we do things our way and the Liverpool way and it has always been the case as well. Um, yeah, it's very special. Mate. No one can, no one in world football, if Anfield's on it like tonight, no one can get near us. No, I mean, there's been times where I've been in that stadium on European nights and I should have been there tonight, but um, uh, I'm doing this now. So uh, <laughs> post-match, which would be impossible if I'm at the games. But um, I've been there in European, all, all the biggies, you know, in the past. And tonight felt like one of those those biggies, you know. Um, the Man City, the, the, the 3-0 Man City, you know, the, the Roma game of the past. And then you had the Dortmund. Even the night where we went out to Atletico, just Atletico, Atleti, just before the the COVID thing hit, and when when Bobby scored, I'd never felt the stadium bounce like it bounced that that goal. Obviously, yeah. we went on to lose the game and got knocked out, but um, there's just been so many amazing memories in there, and then people making memories tonight as well. And that's what that's what it's all about, you know. It's all yeah. about and hey. I was watching the watch along whilst I was doing the commentary Thanks, in Discord, Bobby. and I uh, and my daughter was sitting next to me watching the game for the first time, actually ever watching it because she was interested to watch. And once we scored, because you're on a bit of a delay on YouTube, yeah. I turned the I turned it around and said, "Hey, watch the celebration." And we were just watching you <laughs> celebrate, <laughs> having yeah. a great time. So it was, uh, it was, yeah, what a, what a great thing. And um, I think, yeah, well done to you as well for your second your second yeah. win. And your, just, your second game when watch along, well done, mate. Yeah, just try and encapsulate the, the heart of Liverpool in terms of uh, you celebrating an old mate or anyone in the ground. It's it's it, it, there's nothing better than that ball flying in the net. If we were playing a set of Martians on Mars, mate, I'd still celebrate like that. If Liverpool were playing, mate, we, we'd uh, I'd certainly uh, be buzzing, mate. And hopefully, I made up you enjoyed it, mate. And thank you to everyone at Anfield Index for. Give me a warm welcome and uh, yeah, good. It's going to be a good season, and I'm looking forward to even more watch longs as well, Miss. I think it's just made it a little bit more exciting for us at the channel. Um, we're we're literally just a podcast channel to start with and a, and a website, and uh, to add the video element uh, made it very very exciting for us. So um, yeah, having you here is great. Um, yeah, I mean, what a night overall. Top of the league, 15 points. That's that's qualified now in the Champions League. Mm. Focus is all on yep. Manchester City on Sunday. Any early thoughts for that? I mean, we're praying for for we're praying for good news with uh, Bradley and um, and Canate, especially Canate. If Bradley does miss a couple, we've got Trent coming back in. But again, we need to manage Trent as well. He's just coming back from a from a hammy. So yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts early on before um before it's, that before that game comes? It's 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 a big moment. So I think obviously. We can play at our maximum, but I don't want to similar when I was coming into this game on the pre-match talk with the chat as well. It's Real Madrid. It's City as well. Yes, they've got injuries, City, but I think if we play at our maximum, I think we'll wipe the floor with them. But even still, you still need to put in a performance like we did tonight. And, and, and by Lord, we did. It was, um, yeah, they're in a difficult moment, but this is where City are at their most dangerous for me. Similar with Liverpool as well for top teams. It, when they're going through tricky spells, I don't want, if City do hopefully don't get a result on Sunday, but that could be the catalyst for a good return of form. So we all know the job in hand for this Liverpool side and, and even the fans as well from around the world. Just get behind the lads again. One game, like keep on one game at a time, but certainly we can put ourselves eleven points clear. I don't think we're relaxed, mate. I don't know how you feel, mate. In terms of, I think we'll go even more. I think it will give us that confidence to very much that would just put the onus even more on Manchester City that they can't slip up even more. Yeah, I think the pressure's definitely on City. I always will feel the pressure every single game when we get to like. There's a part of you that hates being under pressure all the time. Um, you know, when you're in a title yeah. running, but also that's what you blimmin' live for, right? Yeah. Um. 
uh, at the end of the day, this part of being it being a fan is being in these title runs and runnings and races and and challenging. Um, but the adrenaline is going to be high. The nerves are going to be high on, on Sunday. We 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 absolutely will be under some pressure in terms of needing you know now. I think it's the first game in some. I read somewhere five six years or seven years something like that that Man City are not favourites for a game for the first time in in that long. Um, so that in itself speaks volumes but it's also the type of game where they might just turn up i really hope um you know pep is feeling the. i mean you can see pep's feeling the pressure and, it, and and it's not about banter you shouldn't take the piss out of the the pressure i mean the, the stuff that he was saying last night and obviously he's come out today and made some comments about uh, mental health which is very important and shouldn't be talked and bantered about and i don't think he was i think i think it you know he literally probably was you know he was probably scratching his face and head when he when he it's, was frustrated at the 3-3 and and you know that's a, not a nice place to see anybody anybody in a as a human thing it's a it's a human thing and and you know us reds are the best at things like this and empathy and um and i think yeah i feel for him but i don't feel for his club at all about what they're going through i don't feel for the fans at all what they're going through um and i hope we do stick it to them all on uh on sunday and I, I actually hope it's a it's a convincing win. I don't I don't want an edgy win. I want it to be convincing on Sunday. Uh, but I hope everybody's health stays well, if that makes sense at the same time. Yes. Um, but but yeah, they it, this is pressure's on. We need to do it. And I think I think that's what they thrive on. Though we've got players yeah. like Verge and Trent and Mo and you know I mean we got a World Cup winner in there. Who knows what pressure is, right? That that World Cup final was pressure. Edge of Van Dijk as well, miss as well. That's yeah, what I said, Verge. Been, you know yeah, they yeah. they they know what yeah. pressure is. They've been there before. Yeah. They've won Champions League finals. They literally won every trophy in club football. Yeah. Let's be honest, uh, some of them. So they got the right leaders in there, and we've got an up and coming team of of some of them haven't won stuff, and they want to prove it. This is the game. This is this. They've done it on one against the European champions. You're now playing. The best team in the world, or so-called, on 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 Sunday is time to, and they're in the the worst, you know, bit of form. Worst that we've seen of many of a year, yeah. Ever, 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 since ever since they probably got relegated a couple yeah. of times, you know. So um, yeah, I really, I really hope, um, I really hope we smash them. I really do. Hopefully, mate. But yeah, yeah, um, at the end of the day, what an absolutely fantastic win for Liverpool. Um, a great start to the Anfield Index YouTube uh, live video uh, shows as well. We've got loads of content coming over the next uh, few weeks. The matches are not going to stop. And that means we'll be on the airwaves the whole time with you. Jack will be here every single game. I'll be here every single game. We might be together here every single game. We'll see uh, as well. So loads going on, loads to come. Thank you again, once again, Jack. Thanks to everyone who's watching, you, listening. I think we got up to nearly 2,000 on on uh, Twitter, I'm not calling it X ever, and um, yeah, keep um, keep following. Keep uh, sub you, what we would love you to do is subscribe, subscribe yeah. to the YouTube channel, get it going, like the video, please get it get it rolling on YouTube as well. We would really appreciate all of your support. So many of you have supported our podcast for so many years. We've been going for Lini eleven years on podcasting, thirteen years as a website. We've been around a long time and we're just getting going on YouTube. So we really do need your support to get us going on YouTube as well as a channel. And uh, uh, and and yeah, we love everything we do and we love all the support you guys give us. So, And the main thing is we love Liverpool Football Club so much. And they are absolutely making it our lives an absolute treat right now. Flying. Oh my God. I, can, I look forward to going to work tomorrow. And uh, going in those Slack channels and uh, and riding up those Man United fans, that's going to be apt. And they might be even be watching. They might even be watching. So, hey, hello, United fans. Hope you're enjoying uh, watching Liverpool do well. But, uh, yeah, Jack, any final thoughts before we, we end, the, end the show? Let's get into these on Sunday, mate. So, this is all that he's been saying. We got we know the Saskin hands. These lads are flying. Main thing, as we said at the top of the show, to everyone in the comments, Fingers crossed. I think make sure you do uh, follow Anfield Index and all socials as well to get all the latest injury updates as well. Uh, and just keep up to date on all the shows coming out, mate. But uh, yeah, thank you, mate, for having me on. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm looking forward to Sunday already, like we all are. And uh, let's get this. Yeah, it's going to be some. Uh, we thought the atmosphere was mad tonight, mate. It was amazing. It's going to go even up 10 more decibels, really. It's going to be ridiculous. 
Absolutely. I think at the end of the day, um, there's so much coming from us. Remember, we are not just a, uh, if you found us on, uh, if you've just found us on uh, YouTube, we are a, a, a big podcast channel as well. And we have our own subscription contents at Amphoid Index Pro, amphoidindex.com forward slash join if you want to get again any of that. And we have a Discord server as well where we do live commentary in terms of the, um, the the match commentary. I'm on there doing match commentary in text version and chatting away with our subscribers and supporters in there. And, um, you know, I think we're going to even try and stream this in Discord for folks, uh, you know, as in the, the live watch along that, that Jack does. So if people want to watch and chat chat in there, we can do that too. So, yeah, there's loads of things we do. We, we, we've really covered loads of bases. So make sure you follow us on everything if you can. We'd really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah. That is everything tonight. We will join you again on Sunday. We cannot wait, but before Sunday, there'll still be loads of shows coming. Um, thank you so much. We appreciate your, uh, um, your support. Up the Reds. Get in. Yeah, Joe.